Hey, welcome, Puppet here, and today I thought about showing you guys the mouse I use as my daily driver for gaming and my live streams, but also for all my other PC related work, like video and image editing, for instance. So, my mouse is the SteelSeries Sensei Raw in its rubberized version. There's also a glossy model of this mouse, but I actually think this one is the most common. Anyway, I've been using this mouse for over three years now, so I think I can safely say I got to know it pretty well with all its pros, but also its flaws. And there are a few of them, as you will see. But overall, I would say I'm happy with it, and I haven't felt the need to replace it, so those drawbacks aren't deal-breakers for me. The Sensei Raw has an ambidextrous design, which for me is an absolute requirement, because I am ambidextrous, and I like changing hands from time to time, especially while working. When gaming, I play mainly with the mouse on my right hand, but I also like to play with the FPS's lefty as a challenge. And this brings us to the first issue I have with this mouse, which is the button placement. Because the mouse has an ambidextrous design, the side buttons are placed symmetrically on both sides, but the ones that say opposite to your thumb are extremely awkward to use. But even the thumb buttons are a bit hard too, especially the one furthest. But that may be because I have a rather small hand and my thumb has to reach a bit to get to that button. Overall, I wouldn't recommend this mouse if you have very small hands, not only because of the button placement, but also because the mouse is quite uh, large in general. Apart from the four side buttons, there's also a middle mouse button, of course, that you can also click by pushing to the right hand side, but not the left, funny enough, and a DPI button with a dedicated LED, and more on that later. There's also a white LED Steel Series logo and a 2 meter or 6.5 feet braided cable, as you can see. Adequately long, reaches all the way to the back of my PC, no problem. The build quality is solid, the cable is holding up very well, and the main body of the mouse too, with only the two main buttons showing some visible signs of wear, but still working perfectly fine. Only the feet are significantly worn out, but that is because in my case I don't use a mouse pad. I like the freedom of using all the available space in my desk to move the mouse around. A mouse pad will definitely be more kind to the feet than the surface of my desk, but they can be replaced anyway, so it's not such a big deal. And even after two years of use, they're still holding up. In the beginning, I did say that I've been using the Sensei Raw for three years, but this specific mouse has been with me for only two, because I actually returned the first one. Which brings me to the thing I most absolutely hate about this thing. After the first year or so of using the mouse, I started noticing a very high-pitched noise coming from it. I assume it was there all along, but it's only noticeable from a certain position, and once I heard it, I simply could not unhear it. So I actually returned that first mouse, thinking it might be faulty, only to discover that the new one had the exact same issue. Now, I don't know if it was just my bad luck or if this is just the way it is, but the truth is that the noise is there. It's not sufficiently loud for me to capture it with my mic so you guys can hear it, so it's not something that will bother everyone. As I said, I don't hear it all the time, only when everything is quiet around here and from a certain position. But again, once I heard it, that was it, I could not let go. Now let's talk a bit about one of the most powerful features of the Sensei RAW, which is the software. It uses the SteelSeries Engine 3, and from here you can do a lot of cool stuff, like creating profiles for certain applications and games that launch automatically when you open those games. You can also reassign every single button on the mouse to whatever you want, including the DPI button, if you wanted to do something else. You can create macros, there's a macro editor right here, where you can do pretty much whatever you can think of. Here we have the DPI, or as SteelSeries calls it, the CPI controls, where you can toggle between two different DPI levels for each profile, that's what the DPI button is for, and you can set them individually in increments of 90 DPIs. So here I have a higher value for my regular desktop use, and then a lower sensitivity for more minute work on image editing, for instance. I find myself using the toggle more for productivity than actual gaming, but for some people use it a lot for gaming, of course. Having control over the DPI settings in specific profiles is a great feature overall, because, say for instance, you have a game where the lowest mouse sensitivity in-game is 2i. You can go into the mouse driver and increase, decrease, or fine-tune the sensitivity to your liking. I think that's a great feature. 
You can also control the illumination here, again for individual profiles. The mouse has two LEDs, one on the SteelSeries logo and one on the middle mouse button, but you can't control them individually. It's not RGB, the mouse has just a white LED, which for me is totally fine since I don't really care about fancy RGB, but I find the illumination quite useful to indicate which profile is active at any given time. For instance, my default profile has the illumination off, and if I set a game's profile to have the illumination on, then I know instantly if the profile is active or not by looking at the mouse. The effects are steady, as you can see here, with control over the brightness level, breathe, and trigger. The trigger only works with the left and right mouse buttons, though. And finally, the polling rate. This controls how often your PC talks to the mouse, I won't be going into much detail here, because I plan to do a separate video about this where hopefully I will show you the importance of this setting, maybe debunk a few misconceptions about it and show you some actual gameplay impact of different polling rates. So stay tuned for that video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it, hopefully it will be coming soon. Well, and now for the conclusion. Overall, this is a very good device with a solid build quality, durable and ambidextrous, which for me is a must. It also has great software with tons of customizability. As for the cons, well, there are mainly two in my opinion. The button placement on the sides is awkward, and then there's that high-pitched sound it makes from just sitting there. As I said before, these are not deal breakers for me, and I will gladly use this thing for as long as it still works well and, from the looks of it, it might hold up for quite a few more years. Thanks for watching! The thumbs up or thumbs down buttons are there to be clicked on, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my other videos, follow me on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Links can be found in the description below. I'll see you next time. This was the Techno Puppet.